I also ask Dave to show me what happens when I throw a pebble of the Empire State Building. And the pebble that we chose was at a radius of one centimeter. It's the kind of pebble that all of us could find. I know roughly the density of pebbles. And when we throw it off the Empire State Building, we reach a terminal speed of about 75 miles per hour. Without the air drag, we would have reached 225 miles per hour. So I want to show you that too. So now you see the Empire State Building, which has a height of 475 meters. So that's where you start at T0. This is 1 second, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 5 seconds, 15 seconds. And if there had been no air drag, it would hit the ground little less than 10 seconds. But now it will hit the ground more like 16, 17 seconds. And you see that the terminal speed builds up in about 5, 6 seconds. It's very close to the final value. And if there had been no air drag, then the speed at which it would hit the ground, it would, of course, grow linearly. And when it hits the ground, it would be somewhere here, which is 225 miles per hour. So you see that even a pebble, you wouldn't expect to, be, to have a very large effect on air drag. It is huge, provided that you throw it from a high building. Now, you may remember that we dropped an apple from three meters and that we calculated the gravitational acceleration given the time that it takes to fall. That was one of, your, one of the things you did in your assignment. We had 781 milliseconds, I think. And out of that, you can calculate g, right? Because you know that 3 meters is 1 half gt squared. So I give you the 3 with an uncertainty. I give you the time, 781 milliseconds, with an uncertainty of 2 milliseconds, which we allowed. Out pops g. So I asked Dave, what is the effect of air drag on this apple? Is it, was it a responsible thing for us to ignore that? The apple has a mass of 134 grams. It's easy to weigh, of course. So this was our apple during our first lecture. M is 134 grams. It's almost a sphere, really. Not quite, but almost a sphere, and the radius is about three centimeters. And that leads to a terminal velocity, which you can calculate if you want to, using the v squared term, but I was not interested in that. I wanted to know how many milliseconds is the touchdown delayed because of the air drag. And Dave made the calculations, and he found that that is two milliseconds from three meters. From one and a half meters, it's almost nothing. And the reason why it's almost nothing from one and a half meters, you see, when you throw an apple in air, it's really in regime two. So you're really dominated by the speed square. And the first one and a half meters, it doesn't get a very high speed yet. The speed grows linearly, and so it is the last portion where you really get hit by the air drag by the v squared term. Two milliseconds from three meters. So if h is three meters, there is a two milliseconds, let's call it delay. So we were on the hairy edge of being lucky and unlucky. If you really want to recalculate the gravitational acceleration using our data, you should really subtract the two milliseconds from the time. On the other hand, since we allowed the two, two millisecond uncertainty, we really weren't too far off.